for today's game, today's lineup. Go, Go get your programs here. Hi, once again, everybody, from a sodden Orange Bowl. It's been raining here all week long. Patriots have not won here in 18 straight games. This one is for the right to play in Super Bowl 20. The storm hit the Orange Bowl with a savage fury, and the Dolphins' vision of another trip to the Super Bowl became blurred. Patriots stole Dan Marino's thunder. And ultimately, the Dolphins could not weather the challenge of the eventual AFC champions. Perhaps the most disappointing aspect of Miami's first ever conference title loss was that the team would not be able to fight back. For fighting back from defeat was a trademark of the 1985 Dolphins. Last year, Miami won their first 11 games, but 1985 saw them lose their season opener to Houston. Even in defeat, Don Strock's efforts signaled that the Dolphins were a team that simply didn't know how to quit. Cornerback William Judson, number 49, the cornerstone of Mel Phillips secondary, also contributed a score as he capitalized on the efforts of fellow defensive backs Bud Brown, Paul Lankford, Don McNeil, Mike Kozlowski, and Lyle Blackwood. The Dolphin defense exhibited hustle and heart, qualities that characterized the entire squad. New faces in both seasoned veterans as well as promising rookies made the Dolphins a spirited team. And possessing the finest quarterback in professional football continually enabled Miami to extract victory from the jaws of defeat. In 1985, the Dolphins overcame obstacles and remained one of pro football's most exciting and successful teams because of their unique ability to fight to the finish. Miami shrugged off the week one setback and strode confidently into their home opener against the Colts. Dan Marino's two touchdowns keyed the 30 to 13 win. When it comes to the machine-like efficiency of the Miami offense, congratulations may go to Marino, but credit must be given to the offensive line. By handcuffing defenders, this unit has allowed the fewest sacks in the NFL over the last three years. Anchoring the line is center Dwight Stevenson, who excels both on the field as a three-time Pro Bowler and off of it as the NFL's Man of the Year. Tackle John Giesler was the team's Superman of the Year as he played with serious injuries all season long. Line coach John Sandusky was forced to stitch together the patchwork unit of Roy Foster, Ronnie Lee, Jeff Taves, Cleveland Green, Steve Clark, Jeff Dallenbach, and Larry Lee, who made it possible for Dan Marino to throw an NFL high 30 touchdown passes. When the Dolphin linemen weren't shutting the door on pass rushes, they were opening lanes for Carl Tassett's running back core, which featured Tony Nathan, Joe Carter, and Woody Bennett, number 34. Bennett also doubled as a bruising blocker and was the catalyst for this Tony Nathan touchdown. Through the first three weeks of the season, the line did not yield a single sack. Such consistency enabled the offense to score a club record 31 second half points against visiting Kansas City. It was a day for firsts as rookie Ron Davenport made his end zone debut while Chuck Studley's defenders recorded their first shutout in 26 games. Led by Doug Betters, number 75 and Jay Brophy number 53, Miami put the clamps on the Chiefs. 
The Dolphins certainly looked good against Kansas City, and they looked even better a week later when they produced their first ever win in frigid Denver, despite a chilly reception. It was billed as a duel between Marino and Elway, but retiring defensive line coach Mike Scarry sharpened his troops and unleashed Mac Moore, George Little, Bill Barnett, and Kim Bocamper, number 58. Number 51, Mark Brown, the team's leading tackler for the second straight season, helped fortify a defense which came up with the big plays at crucial times. The Denver defense wasn't as successful in containing Marino, who passed for 390 yards, including this 73-yard completion to Tony Nathan and three touchdowns. Third down and six. Marino deep drop. Pass across the middle. It is caught. This is going to go. Nat Moore, 69 yards. Moore got in behind Dennis Smith, the safety, and then the old man outran him. While the Dolphins eventually lost the lead, they kept their cool, and Marino delivered a blast more potent than a Rocky Mountain avalanche. Third and eight from the 46. Back he goes. Looks and fires, man open, caught by Heflin, shakes the tackle, 30, 30 to 25, he's going to score, 10, 5, touchdown for Vince Heflin. And that's the first touchdown in the NFL for E.T. Vince Heflin's touchdown sealed Miami's victory. The following week in a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game, rookie running back Lorenzo Hampton capped off a last-minute rally with his first pro score to give Miami a 24-20 win. After two consecutive come-from-behind victories, the Dolphins were finally blinded by the light in a prime-time spectacle against the Jets. A hit show that had produced seven straight wins over New York closed abruptly. Fortunately, a casting call had brought in two-time pro bowler Hugh Green to boost Bob Matheson's linebacking core. They felt that I had added a lot to the game, and uh, they felt, you know, basically, hey, we're on our way, let's go, let's play, let's uh, do a lot of different things. we got a person that we feel that can help us, that one person that we needed, and uh, let's win. Green, number 55, immediately made his presence felt and notched five sacks. We uh, felt that he would really help our team. We needed somebody with that kind of uh, emotional and enthusiastic play, and he's really fit in, and he just lifts everybody up. In week seven, Green welcomed his former team to the Orange Bowl in a rather discourteous manner. But it was up to another Dolphin newcomer to salvage a win in a game that went down to the wire. Ravez can turn out to be the hero of the night. Here's the snap, set down, the kick is up, he's got the distance on it, it is... Gives the Dolphins what turns out to be a win, 41 to 38. Fouad Reves and punter Reggie Roby, who boasted the second best average in the league, gave the Dolphins their finest kicking tandem in years. On special teams, strength coach Junior Wade has helped develop a fine nucleus of talent in Jim Jensen, Mike Smith, Robin Sendlein, Tom Vigorito, Alex Moyer, and Robert Sowell. Whether recovering fumbles or onside kicks, this unit was as opportunistic as it was enthusiastic. By midseason, Miami appeared to be caught in a web of confusion. In dropping two straight games, a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde personality had surfaced. Against Detroit, the defense gave up 24 first half points before Mike Charles and Bob Brzezinski, number 59, combined for a score. The following week, the Miami offense could manage only one touchdown as they fell to the Patriots. The Dolphins were reeling on the ropes with a 5-4 and four record, third in the division. A team accustomed to the role of favorite found itself in a different position. To win the AFC East, 
It would take a fight to the finish. Facing a critical rematch with the division-leading Jets, the Dolphins did turn to a pint-sized person to provide them with the proper therapy. Mark Duper returned to the starting lineup and showed no ill effects of the broken leg which had sidelined him for eight weeks. The old Dolphin Lightning was striking opponents once again. Reno drops straight back to throw. He's looking deep. He's got Duper down there. He's got it. 30. Over the 20. 15. 10. 5. Touchdown, Buffalo! Nothing wrong with Duper. He's uh, running with his old abandon. Uh, really never hesitated to turn it loose today. With just over a minute remaining in the game, the Jets took the lead. But the Dolphins weren't down for the count just yet. 49 seconds, one timeout remaining. They trail by three. All the receivers are in as they go to the shotgun once again. The whole season perhaps in balance here. Here is Marino back to throw. He's going deep. Got a man down there. He's got a touchdown! Oh, oh, oh. Cooper! What a great catch by Cooper! Marino was back on the mark, and that signaled the turning point of the Dolphin season. Against the Jets, Duper set a club record with 217 receiving yards, and his return also paid immediate dividends for Mark Clayton, who had been a victim of double teaming during Duper's absence. Clayton actually took enough pounding for himself and Duper. But number 83 still managed to total 70 catches for 996 yards. David Shula's receiving core also included outstanding performances by veterans Bruce Hardy and Nat Moore, whose receptions led to a Week 11 win against the Colts. Tight end Dan Johnson's touchdown keyed the Dolphins' victory in Buffalo a week later. Two straight victories stoked the fires for the main attraction of the season, a Monday night showdown in the Orange Bowl with the only undefeated team in pro football. Dolphin pride was on the line as Miami sought to protect its place in NFL history as the only team to produce a perfect season. Strategy was set. Forces were mobilized. The battle had begun. The Dolphins approached the vaunted Bears defense with a posture of defiance. Marino, a pocket passer, didn't rely on conventional tactics. He rolled away from the pressure and bombarded the opposition. was the Dolphins most complete game of the season offense defense and special teams operated at peak efficiency Miami trapped their quarterbacks a season high six times with Mike Charles the team sack leader spearheading the attack William Judson and Glenn Blackwood, Miami's interception leader, produced key steals. To top it all off, Miami got the bounces too. From the 42. Here's the snap. Back he goes to throw. Under pressure. Ball is deflected in the air. With a 38 to 24 victory, the Dolphins became the only team to beat the eventual world champions in 1985. Against the Bears and throughout the season, much of the Dolphins' success was a reflection of their quarterback. 
Miami's fight to the finish philosophy was embodied in a streetwise tough kid from Pittsburgh, a player who combined equal parts talent and tenacity. No one in pro football threw for more completions, yards, and touchdowns. Dan Marino was a speed reader of defenses who possessed the cool confidence to throw from anywhere to anywhere. thing that makes him as good as he is, he has that, that uncanny ability to feel pressure and know when to get rid of the ball. He doesn't have to look at, see where the linemen are coming from. He feels where they're coming from. And so just about the time you think you're going to get to him, he lets the ball go. And therefore, he defeats strong rush because of that ability. And I think that's the greatest ability he has. His perception of uh, whether a man is open or not uh, maybe a lot different than anybody else's. His idea about what it takes to get the ball to a receiver is obviously a lot different. He's going to throw the ball into some spots that uh, I might not ask a, a quarterback to do for me. He knows his players and he knows where they're going to be and he knows uh, how to get the ball to them and he always done it better than anybody else in the history of football. Last year was the year where Marino had to adapt. We figured that teams would try to take away the long ball from us, and they did. They sat back and played the deep zones and uh, gave us the underneath passing. Marino had to have the patience that's necessary to throw the ball underneath and complete it to the receiver and then have the receiver break a tackle and, and make the big gain. Marino's patience paid off as he threw five touchdowns against Green Bay. His progress was impressive in terms of the 10-yard flip rather than the 70-yard bomb. Reno, quick drop. Throws across the middle. It is caught at the 10-yard line. Down to the five. This is a touchdown for Mark Clayton. Marino drilled it right in the numbers. This season, Marino overcame the impatience of youth. The mad bomber of 1984 became dissecting Dan of 85. No matter what he's labeled, Dan Marino remains number one in the hearts of Dolphins. The Dolphin future is secure in the hands of players like Marino. The future is also being built in South Florida. Dolphin Stadium, targeted for 1987, is the brainchild of team owner Joe Robbie, who has nurtured this proud franchise since its inception two decades ago. Robbie has also built a winner on the field by signing talented rookies such as Lorenzo Hampton, who doubled as both kick returner and runner. Youth will help fortify an area Don Shula feels must improve next season. We feel that uh, teams are playing us as a pass-only team right now. We've got to be able to run with the football. We've got a young back that, that we think is going to be the answer in Ron Davenport. Davenport scored a Dolphin rookie record 13 touchdowns. While the fullback has gained the respect of his coach, a rookie place kicker has earned quite a following. Fouad Reve's clutch kick against New England in week 15 enabled Miami to win a crucial fight down the home stretch. In the season finale against Buffalo, the Dolphin defense delivered an inspirational performance. Paced by number 50, Jackie Ship's interception, the Dolphins repeatedly repelled the Bills. Two yards to go for a score. That shutout is in jeopardy. Everybody sets in tight. Again, the eye with Smith in front of Cribs. And here's a give off to Cribs. Hurdles. No, he didn't make it. Dolphins stop him. Great goal line stand at the one yard line. He did not even get The 28 to nothing victory over Buffalo wasn't much of a battle. Little did the Dolphins know that the fight of their season still lay ahead. Hi once again, everybody. This is Rick Weaver from the Orange Bowl in Miami and the climax of another highly successful season for Don Shula. Perhaps his greatest coaching job since he's been here in Miami, taking a team that had a lot of holdout problems at the beginning of the year, umpteen injuries throughout the season, 
He's lost people in the offensive line and on the defense, but yet has come back and molded another AFC Eastern Division champion. The Dolphins were a team that lived by the long pass, and against the Browns, it was this tactic which nearly killed them. This game was supposed to be a cakewalk for Miami, but it threatened to become a blowout by Cleveland. By the third quarter, the Dolphins were on the short end of a 21-3 score. Only one team in playoff history had rebounded from a greater deficit. With renewed determination and the confidence that no lead was insurmountable, Dan Marino directed the Dolphins on the long road back. Matt Moore supplied a quick score, and the crowd added its voice. Facing a rookie quarterback who was coming apart at the seams, momentum shifted toward Miami. It was up to the Dolphins to sew up the holes in their defense and shut down the Cleveland attack. Miami had withstood the Browns' best punches. Now, they proceeded to land telling blows of their own. On second down and three, Davenport finds a hole. He's got room. He's down to the 25, the 20. He's going to score. And the Dolphins are right back in it. Third and goal from the one foot line. Here's a give off. Davenport. He's into the end zone. Miami's 24-21 win was the second greatest comeback in playoff history. 1985 was a year in which victory did not come easily, but the Miami Dolphins captured another AFC East crown and remained among the NFL elite because of their indomitable will to fight to the finish.